issue that North, Ameri North uh, American manufacturers uh, work manufacturing legislative excellence. And I would just like to say thank you on behalf of Harlan Company and the others represented here for all you do and your willingness to take on this very tough role. So thank you.
If you ever start to wonder about where you are and where you're stuck, go back and remember about what it was that made you great. What it was that made your family great, your church great, your school great, your community great. And then say, why don't I just go back and do the things we used to do? Why don't I just go back and forget that I'm a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian or an Independent and remember that I'm an American? That's all it takes. It doesn't take a flash of light from the heavens. We all know what we need right now. We do not need to be the divided states of America. We need to be the United States of America. And for any politician to come here and talk to you, but not talk to you about being on your side and making it easier for you to be successful, not making it easier for you to prosper, and talking to you about how government will grow the business for you, please show them the door and say, get, get out. Because you've obviously never done what I've done. You can talk the talk, but you never walk the walk. No, the opportunities are phenomenal. The upside for America is great. What you're doing here is absolutely phenomenal. You can dominate, not just participate in a global market. You know that. You can thrive and not merely survive. But you need a government that works with you. A government that is your advocate and not your adversary. A government that understands that when you go into battle, when Danny takes his product out there, he's not just competing against a Russian company, he's competing against Russia. And when we go out there, we have to compete not only against the Russian company and Russia, we have to compete against our own government. Why? When you win, America wins. When we prosper, America prospers. And with everything the Lord has given us, to be in the situation we're in today is a sin. Now, it can all be fixed. And people ask me all the time, you know, you always come in here and you, uh, you get all spun up about this stuff. And, you know, what do you think we ought to do? Here's what I think you ought to do. I think you ought to get totally committed to this way of life and this form of government we have. And I think it's all right to sit at home and throw your shoe at the TV and say how I don't like those people that are down in Washington. <laughs> But I just remember one thing. Those people that are sitting in those seats in Washington, and those people that are sitting in Harrisburg, and those people that are sitting in your school boards and in your municipalities, didn't just go in and sit down. They ran for the office and they got elected. My question is, if it's so bad, why don't you do something about it? If you're not happy with the way things are going, don't sit back and take it. If you think we're wrong, don't let us keep on that same path. If you're not happy with the way your government's going, don't just sit there and get mad at your wife or your kids or the TV. Get totally committed, not just involved. Listen, we can win this battle. And it is a battle. I want you to think about the bright side of this. The world is a big place, but not nearly as big as it used to be. When I can sit here to say that we just are the number one rank in a bid in the Czech Republic. This isn't next door. It's halfway around the world. You can compete anywhere, anytime, any place, on any field, as long as it's level. And as long as you know you've got a partner that wants you to win. That's my message. And my message is to you, please, as much as we may be disappointed, it's okay to be disappointed, it's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to drop out. My greatest fear is that if we lose faith in this form of government we have, that America is over. You know what I'm saying is true. You know that it requires each of us every day doing our flat level best to make sure this country is great, this country is steady, and this country is strong, and that the next generation gets it in better shape than we did. It's a personal commitment from me, and it needs to be a personal commitment from each of us to the future. So I really appreciate being here. I can't tell you. It's nice to get it on work once in a while. I don't mean to listen. I'm, I'm 64. I, I can tell everybody. I think I'm, I'm hoping I'm early in the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know for sure. I'm hoping I'm, we're all moment to moment. We know that. But uh, I've been blessed with a wonderful life uh, and wife. Uh, we've shared an awful lot together. We've shared a dream. Uh, we started off with and uh, didn't really know how it would end up. We, we, we felt pretty strongly about each other. We've had a wonderful, wonderful time. And this community that I live just a few miles away has been great. 
Some of you know my story, I'm an automobile dealer, but my dad started as a parts picker in a General Motors warehouse. I'm just going to tell you a story about him. He was one of nine. In my dad's family, there was no such thing as a car. They didn't have enough money. My grandmother was a conductor of the B&O Railroad. The only person that ever got a new pair of shoes or a new pair of pants or a new shirt was his oldest brother, John. The rest all got to use it as John grew out of it and they grew into it. There was enough to eat, but there was never too much to eat. There was always a challenge, but there was also a promise that if you worked really hard and you played by the rules, that you were going to do all right. My dad worked very, very hard. He started a little business in 1953 after he got back from the war, a little one-car show in a little town called Verona with about four service bays and built into something that we are very, very proud of. Not boastful, proud, but proud that over those years, we've been able to work together with a lot of other people. We're still open, we're in third generation. It's not an easy thing to do, uh, what we've done. But it's because we're here in America. Wouldn't it happen anywhere else? As in most places, if you grow up uh, and you're a parts picker, you die as a parts picker. <laughs> but uh, we were able to get through some tough times, and we still have some tough times. It's not, it's not a walk in the park. It's sometimes just a stumble along the way, but we can do it. So I, I can't tell you, I appreciate being able to be with you. I can't tell you what an honor it is and a privilege to serve you. I would just ask you to do something. If you think that somehow we could do something better, would you please, don't keep it to yourself. Please let our office know. Uh, there's a gentleman with me today, Brad Moore is with me. Brad, why don't you stand up? Brad Moore uh, is a young man who has been working with us for several years now. He knows this district inside. He runs a district. Behind him is Marcy Mustello. Uh, Marcy works. And when I use the term we, I'm never talking about myself in the third person. We, uh, the group that represents you, there's 15 total that represents Northwest Pennsylvania. Now, that's 15 total for the 705,687 constituents that we have. One of the funny things is I've got elected where every once in a while somebody has a problem with a social security or a veteran's problem or, or, or some problem that they need to get in touch with their federal office with and they'll come up to me and say, you know, I didn't vote for you, <laughs> but I need your help. I said, no, I didn't know that until right now. <laughs> I said, I know you, everybody thinks I know who votes for us and who doesn't vote for us, I know, but you know, we're here to serve everybody. So I only want to ask you, we can serve you, but you also must stay in touch with us. I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. If you're not happy with the way it is, don't stand for it. And it's okay to get it off your chest, but make sure you also get it off your plate. If you have an idea you think would work, don't be silent. Let us know what it is. And if there's any service we can provide for you, the federal government, please let us know. The other invitation I would make to you, because I never, uh, I never had a chance to go to Washington. Uh, the, I was in the Catholic school, and 